Today we're on pages 198 and 199 of our textbook, Lesson 9, Imaginary Numbers. Recall in the real number system, it is not possible to take the square root of a negative quantity because whenever a real number is squared, it is non-negative. This fact has ramification for finding the x-intercepts of a parabola, as exercise number one will illustrate. So on the axis below here, we have the graph of y equals x squared. Consider the parabola whose equation is given in function notation as f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. How is the graph of y equals x squared shifted to produce the graph of f of x? Well, this plus 1 here simply means that you take each point and shift it up 1. Create a quick sketch of f of x on the axis below. Uh, so the point 0, 0 would shift up to 0, 1, the point 1, 1 up to 1, 2. So basically each point is being shifted up 1. So it looks something like this. This would be f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. What can be said about the x-intercepts of the function y equals f of x? There are none. They do not exist. There are no x-intercepts. Algebraically show that these x-intercepts do not exist in the real number system by solving the incomplete quadratic x squared plus 1 equals 0. So we'll subtract 1 from each side. x squared equals negative 1, and then we'll take the square root of each side. x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is not real. Since we cannot solve this equation using real numbers, we introduce a new number called i. i is the basis of imaginary numbers. Its definition allows us to know, or excuse me, its definition allows us to now have a result when finding the square root of a negative real number. So that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Simplify each of the following square roots in terms of i. What it comes down to is when you have the square root of a negative, just take that negative out. That comes out as i. And then what's the square root of 9? 3. So our answer is 3i. Again, this negative underneath the square root, just bring it out as i. So we have i square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. 10i. Square root of negative 32. This is simply going to come out as i. And 32, I'm thinking 16 times 2, and the square root of 16 is 4, so 4i four square root of 2. Square root of negative 18. Again, this negative comes out as i. And 18, 9 times 2. Square root of 9 is 3. 3i three square root of 2. Solve each of the following incomplete quadratics. Place answers in simplest radical form. Okay, so for the incomplete quadratics, uh, we want the constant on the other side. So subtract 8. We get 5x squared is equal to negative 20. Get x squared by itself. Divide by 5. x squared is equal to negative 4. And now square root each side. Remember, whenever we compose square root, it's plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus square root of negative 4 is 2i. b. Subtract 20, 1 half x squared is equal to negative 18. Multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of 1 half. 
x squared is equal to negative 36, and square root each side. So x equals the square root of negative 36 is 6i, plus or minus 6i. C, add 10 to both sides to start off. 2x squared is equal to negative 26, divide by 2, x squared is equal to negative 13, square root each side, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 13, and the only way that simplifies is the negative comes out as i. So plus or minus i squared root 13. Number four, which of the following is equivalent to 5i times 6i? Well, similar to 5x times 6x, we would say is 30x squared. So similarly here, 5i times 6i is going to be 30i squared. Well, i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1. So that would be the square root of negative 1 squared. And squaring a square root removes the square root symbol. So this is 30 times negative 1, which is negative 30. Choice 3. Powers of i display a pattern that allow us to simplify large powers of i into one of four cases. This pattern is discovered in exercise number 5. Okay, so i to the first is equal to i. i squared, we know, is equal to um, negative 1. Okay, we, took, oops, come on. we took the square root of negative 1 and squared, and that gives us negative 1. i to the third and this is the one that's very, very important to remember. That i squared is equivalent to negative 1. This is an asterisk. Restore. i to the third we can write as i squared times i, which would be negative 1 times i, which is negative i. i to the fourth, let's think of that as i squared times i squared which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. i to the fifth, well since i to the fourth is equivalent to 1, i to the fifth we can break down into i to the fourth times i, which is 1 times i, which is i. i to the sixth, i to the fourth times i squared, i to the fourth is 1, i squared is equivalent to negative 1, so this is negative 1. i to the seventh, i to the fourth times i to the third, and that's 1 times i to the third is equivalent to negative i. 1 times negative i is negative i. And i to the eighth, it's simply i to the fourth times i to the fourth. 1 times 1, which is 1. So i to the first is equal to i, i to the second, negative 1, i to the third, negative i, i to the fourth, 1. i to the fifth, i, i to the sixth, negative 1, i to the seventh, negative i, i to the eighth, 1. What you need to know is i to the first i to the first is simply i i squared is equal to negative one i to the third is equal to negative i i to the fourth is equal to 1. This is what you want to memorize.
To simplify a large power of i, you divide the large power by 4, noting the remainder. Write as i to remainder and simplify. Okay, so we want to simplify i to the 38. So we take the power 38 divided by 4. 4 goes into 38. 9 times is 36. Remainder is 2. So we write i to the 38 as i to the remainder 2. And then i squared is equivalent to negative 1. i to the 21st, you're going to take the 21, divide it by 4. 4 goes into 21 five times with a remainder of 1. So this is equivalent to i to the first, which is simply i. i to the 83rd, going to take 83 and divide it by 4. 20 times is 80. Remainder is 3. And this is equivalent to i to the power of 3, which is equal to negative i. And i to the 40th, 40 divided by 4, there's no remainder. So this is equivalent to i to the 0. Anything to the 0 is equal to 1. Which of the following is equivalent to 5i to the 16th plus 3i to the 23rd plus i to the 26th? Okay, simplify your powers of i first. So i to the 16th, let's try this, 16 divided by 4 is 4 with a remainder of 0. So this is equal to 5i to the 0, and i anything to the 0 is 1, so this is simply 5. i to the 23rd, 23 divided by 4, um, the remainder is 3, so this is equivalent to 3i to the power of 3, and i to the third is equivalent to negative i times 3 is going to be minus 3i. And i to the 26th, 26 divided by 4 has a remainder of 2, so this is equivalent to i squared, and i squared is equivalent to negative 1. So we have 5 minus 3i minus 1. This is going to equal 4 minus 3i. Choice 2. All right, again, so this, make sure you, you want to memorize this. Um, i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1, i squared equals negative 1, i to the third negative i, i to the fourth is equal to 1, which is also equivalent to i to the zero equals 1. Okay, nice short video. Thank you very much for your attention.